Hey Math 100 students, welcome to another video on final exam proofs. Today, we're going to prove for math theorem and rule theorem. It is very important to know both theorems because the proof of rule theorem uses the result of for math theorem. Before we actually prove the theorem, let's study the definition of local extrema again. We say a function f has a local maximum value at c if the y value f of c is greater than or equal to all the y values uh, when x is near c. For example, if you look at this point, this is definitely a local maximum because this y value is greater than or equal to all the y values nearby uh, this point. Similarly, we say a function f has a local minimum value at c if the y value f of c is less than or equal to all the y values of x when x is near c. So for instance, if you look at this point, it's called local minimum because uh, y value of this point is the lowest point of all the y values nearby this point. That's why we say it's local minimum. The next warm-up that we're going to look at is called the limit expression of f prime of c. f prime of c means f is differentiable at c. In other words, this limit expression exists. In other words, limit as h approaches 0, f of c plus h minus f of c all over h, this limit exists. In other words, it's like a finite number. Okay, finally. If we look at the last sentence of this slide, it says if we find that f prime of c is greater than or equal to zero, and f prime of c is less than or equal to zero at the same time, then f prime of c has no choice other than saying that f prime of c is equal to zero. Let's put a box around this because this last sentence is very important uh, at the end of the proof. I think we are ready now. Let's jump right in to prove this Fermat's theorem. All right, let's prove the statement. If f has a local maximum or local minimum at c, and if f is differentiable at c, then f prime of c must be equal to 0. This is the statement. Uh, before we begin, I'm going to consider two cases. And I'm only going to use case 1 for today's proof. And case 1 is when we're assuming f has a local maximum and case 2 is when we're assuming we have local minimum proof and we're considering case 1 case 1 means uh, when we're assuming f of c is greater than or equal to f of x when x is near c that means we are assuming that f has a local maximum at c. Also, we are assuming that f prime of c exists. In other words, um, we are assuming that f prime of c is equal to limit as h approaches 0, f of c plus h minus f of c all over h exists. Now, if we see our second assumption, I see that in order to use the assumption f prime of c, we need to have a number h approaching 0. In other words, let's say h is a small number close to 0. This means because f of c is the local maximum, the y values nearby f of c, which is f of c plus h, must be less than or equal to f of c. And it's because um, since f of c is a local maximum, this is the reason. Now, um, I'm going to move this f of c to the other side, like so. Then I get f of c plus h minus f of c is less than or equal to 0. 
like this. Uh, when you look at this proof carefully, I said h is a small number close to zero. I did not say h is positive or negative. h can be either positive or negative. So what I prefer to do from now on is I divide the page into two vertical parts. And I'm going to assume that let's say on the first column, let's say h is positive. And then on the second column, let's say h is negative, like so. If I divide this equation by h on both sides for the positive case, the sign of the inequality does not change. So I get this, f of c plus h minus f of c all over the h is less than or equal to 0 over h, like so. And did you notice that the sign of inequality is not changed? However, on the other hand, if I divide both sides of the equation uh, by h, like so, and then 0 over h, like so, and please be careful that when you're dividing a negative number both sides, this inequality flips. So I have to have this inequality like this. All right, next, um, I would like to use the assumption, which is f prime of c equals this limit exists. In order for us to use this assumption, we need to have a limit expression flowing around. So let's put the limit sign here, limit sign here on both sides. Before we apply the limit signs, we have to be a little bit careful with our assumption. On the first column, we're assuming that h is positive. That means h is approaching 0 from the right side. So we have to write down the limit as h approaches 0 from the right. Limit as h approaches 0 from the right, like this. For the other side of the column, we are assuming that h is negative. In other words, h is approaching 0 from the left. So we put limit h approaches 0 from the left. Limit as h approaches 0 from the left, like so. However, if we look at the assumption carefully, f prime of c exists. In other words, h approaches 0 from the right, h approaches 0 from the left. The limit value must be equal to each other. In other words, I can replace this expression as like this. Limit as h approaches 0, f of c plus h minus f of c all over h less than equal to well, 0 over anything is 0. Of course, 0 over a positive number here. Here, uh, the limit expression where h approaches 0 from the left, again, by the same assumption, we can say limit as h approaches 0, f of c plus h minus f of c all over h greater than or equal to 0. And if you noticed, this is f prime of c. That means f prime of c is less than or equal to 0 on one side. And if you notice, this one's also f prime of c, which is greater than or equal to 0 on the other side. So let's put a box around this, box around this, and let's go back to our warm-up question. If we find that f prime of c is greater than or equal to 0 and f prime of c is less than or equal to 0 at the same time, then we can say that f prime of c is equal to 0 as a conclusion. So all together, we can say that f prime of c is equal to 0. This is what we wanted to prove for this theorem. All right, everyone, this is the end of case 1 proof. For case 2, the process of the proof is exactly the same, except we are assuming f has a local minimum at c. The only difference is that this inequality here must be flipped because f of c plus h must be greater than or equal to the local minimum of f of c. Therefore, this inequality must be flipped. Otherwise, everything else must be the same. And you'll end up having this result. So I'm just going to call it the second case of a local minimum can be proved in a similar manner. And I'll just say this proof is completely finished. Okay, just one information about our future proof. The only proof that we have to do is called Rolle's Theorem. And I don't think I can do that today. So uh, I'll try to make it 
by tomorrow night, which is Friday night. If not, uh, Saturday afternoon for sure. Check the information on Canvas frequently and get ready for your tests. Okay, see you soon.